Zain Alalibo and you're welcome to Social Studies class. Today we'll be looking at the topic Agent of Socialization in the theme Cultural and Social Values. At the end of the lesson, we should be able to define socialization, identify the agents of socialization, and mention the importance of socialization. Now, what is socialization? As a child, when you're born, your mother does everything for you. She caters for you, she bathes you, she feeds you, she even sings for you in a way. But as you grow, you find out that you learn how to do certain things by yourself. Have you ever wondered how you learn those things? It's not in it. You weren't born with all that knowledge. It is true socialization that we are able to learn all of these things from how to see it as babies, how to crawl, how to walk, and even how to run, how to feed yourself, how to bathe yourself. All of those things, we learn how to do them through the process of socialization. Now, what is socialization? Socialization is the process of learning the values, norms, customs, rules, practices, habits, and social skills with which we can become active members or participants of our society. As a human being, you are a member of your society and you are able to function in society, you are able to be part of society through the process of socialization. You have been able to learn the values, norms, practices, and everything that you know that makes you a member of the society through socialization. So things as little as learning how to eat is part of socialization. You learned it from someone. You learned it from your parents at home or your siblings. Everything that you know how to do today, you have acquired all that knowledge through the process of socialization, one way or the other. It is also the process by which culture is transmitted or transferred from generation to generation. Everything that your parents know, they transfer to you. Everything that you know, you transfer to your younger ones. And when the time comes, you will transfer to your children too. All of this is known as socialization. Transferring everything that you have learned, culture, practices, beliefs to the next generation. This means that socialization is a continuous process. It doesn't end. Every day you keep learning new things. Socialization is a continuous process. Now, we have agents of socialization. Like I just said, everything that you know how to do, you learned it. How did you learn it? Who taught you? These are the agents of socialization, and they include the family, the school, peer group and friends, religious institutions, and the mass media. These are the five major agents of socialization. It is through these agents that we are able to learn most of the things that we know today. The first one, the family. The family is the first society a child meets. When a new child is born, the first set of people that the child meets are the parents, the mother, the father, the siblings, and then extended family. The family is the first society the child meets. That is why you learn most of the things you know, the habits that you imbibe, the way you do the things that you do, you learn most of them from your family. Like in our first illustration, learning how to walk. The child learns to walk from the people he or she sees around him or her. The child learns how to walk from the people he sees around him. He sees an older sibling walking and he tries to walk too. He sees a mother feeding herself and the child tries to feed him or herself too. All of those things we learn from the family. 
The child also learns basic values such as good manners, moral behavior, how to treat others, and how to respect elders from the family. That is why when a child goes out and does something good or bad, it is usually referred back to the family because we know that everything a child learns first is from the family. The basic values that the child learns from the family are what's shaping the child and that is what builds or forms the child's character. So most times see that if a child comes from a family where the father is disciplined, the mother is disciplined, and they all behave well, the child has the tendencies to also be disciplined and behave well. But where it is the opposite, the child also has the tendencies not to be disciplined. The school is the second agent of socialization. Now, after the family... The next society the child is introduced to is, of course, the school. When a child gets to the age of three, four, the child is sent to nursery school. From staying in the house most of the time, the child begins to go to school. And that is the next place where he learns other things that he knows. In the school, we are able to acquire knowledge and skills in different areas. From nursery school, you're taught to speak very well. You're taught the alphabet, how to spell words, how to use words, how to phrase your sentences, all of these. You also learn mathematics and other subjects, so many other things. From the nursery school, you move to the primary school where you learn higher things. You move to the secondary school where you learn higher things. And then the tertiary institution, which is the universities, where you now pick a particular field where you would want to specialize in. We gain knowledge and skills from the school. And this knowledge and skills also help you to participate, to be able to function or play a particular role in society. Now, we do not just get knowledge and skills from our schools. In schools, we are also taught about certain values such as honesty, cooperation. You learn how to work together with other people, people that are not your family, your friends. You learn to work with your friends. We also learn values such as obedience. This is usually taught in the home, but in the school, you're taught to obey rules and regulations. You also learn the principle of accountability and responsibility that is being responsible for your actions and also taking responsibilities within the school environment for example in school you could be appointed a class prefect you're taught how to be responsible for certain things in your classroom we also learn the principle of respect respecting people who are ahead of you and teamwork which we explained in cooperation working together with other People. We learn all of these things in the school. In the school, we are also taught rules like being punctual and regular. You are taught to always go to school early. We are taught to be submissive to authority. And also, we are taught not to cheat during exams. All of these things that we learn are what helps us to behave the right way in society. The school is the agent of socialization through which culture is formally transmitted from generation to generation. In the family, it is not formal. Nobody sits down to tell you, okay, walk like this or eat like this or do this like that. That only comes once in a while. But in the school, you learn it formally, how to behave in society. Now, I would like to point out that If a child is not exposed to all of this, for example, a child is born and maybe at the age of, say, two, three, he or she is secluded from the environment, maybe locked in a room, not allowed to be around people, that child will not be able to function well in society. There have been cases where children have been excluded from society. They are not kept in the general environment where they get to interact with people. Such children have always had problems with socialization. When they are brought out eventually, they are not able to cope in society. They only learn all of these things 
after they have been taught and taught over time. So these processes are what help you to be able to participate in society. They are what help you to do the things that you can do. You can interact with people and do other things. It is true socialization that we have learned all those things. The next agent of socialization, which we are going to be looking at, is pair groups and friends. Now, as a child, after you've met your family, you are sent to school. In school, you make friends. When you go out to church or parties, you make friends. In your neighborhood, too, you make friends. All these people are your pairs, people that you have met and you get to interact with unconsciously you learn different things from your friends you may not know it but some of the things you do are things that you have seen your friend do so it's not just your family and your school that teaches you now your friends teach you as well same way you teach your friends this means that people or children can influence one another positively or negatively you can learn bad habits from your friends just as same way you can learn good habits from your friends. This is why it is important for us to keep good friends so we can learn good things from them. Our parents also watch the kind of friends that we keep. They try to ensure that we keep good friends so we can be of good behavior. Another agent of socialization we have is the religious institutions, for example, the churches and the mosques. When we are born, we are exposed to beliefs and teachings of one religion or the other. It could be Christianity or Islam. And as we grow older, it is the things that we have learned from religious institutions that we use to live the right way. For example, when you see a Christian, you know through the person's behaviors, the kind of things the person does. Now, those are the things he or she has learned from his religious institution. The same goes for the Muslims. It is the things that they have learned from their religious institutions that help to shaping their behavior and the things that they do. And the last agent of socialization which we have is the mass media. Now, when we say the mass media, we're talking about things like the television, the radio, the newspapers, and the internet. These are the mass media. We learn a lot of things from the mass media. When you watch TV, we listen to the radio, we read newspapers, and even go through the internet. We learn a lot of things. That is why they are agents of socialization. Same way you can learn positive things and negative things from your family and friends is the same way you can learn positive and negative things from the mass media. That is why we are expected or encouraged to guard the kind of things that we watch and listen to. Some of the information or some of the things that we get from the mass media include information on development in science and technology, cultural heritage. We watch programs where we are exposed to the different cultures and traditions of different ethnic groups in the country. We also learn moral attitudes, religion. We have a lot of religious shows and drug abuse. We watch awareness campaigns and different programs that help to encourage good morals and also discourage bad morals. We also get information about political and economic issues. We learn about etiquette and more. Now, one way or the other, unconsciously, the information that you get from the mass media have a way of affecting the things that you do, the decisions that you take. For example, you hear that there is shooting somewhere or a particular part of the society is in civil unrest. You definitely will not go to that place, right? Even if you wanted to travel there, or move there. You will not want to move to that area again. So you see that the things that we get from the mass media still affect you. The mass media is one very, very strong and effective agent of socialization. We also see that from the mass media, we learn some of our dressing styles. 
The mass media is an agent of socialization. They teach us all. We learn some of the things that we know from the mass media. And like I said, it affects us both positively and negatively, which is why we should be very conscious of the things that we watch and the things that we hear or read from the mass media. These are the five major agents of socialization. Now, why is socialization important? You remember when I talked about a child who is exposed to society, that is family and friends, and a child who is confined to a particular environment and not exposed or allowed to interact with the outside world. Socialization is very important for the following reasons. One, it helps the individual to acquire knowledge and skills which they can use for a lifetime. Now, this is specifically in the schools. When you go to school, you learn a lot of things. For example, you learn English. You are able to communicate today because you went to school and they taught you how to speak, how to construct your sentences, how to use words. If you bring a child who has been put through school and a child who hasn't been put through school, there would be a huge difference in communication. One will be able to communicate very well in the English language and the other may not be able to communicate properly in the English language. Besides English, we learn a whole lot of other things. For example, when you've gotten to the secondary school level, you decide whether you want to go into the arts or the sciences. You move into the one of your choice. And when you get to the tertiary institution, you acquire knowledge in a particular field. For example, you decide to study medicine. You learn how to practice medicine. Now, these skills and knowledge that you have gathered are with you for a lifetime. And it helps you to perform certain roles in society. Having studied medicine, you are able to treat the sick. You are able to give medical help to the sick. That is one importance of socialization. Also, socialization helps children get accustomed to the norms, values, rules, and regulations guiding the society that they live in. Imagine if you did not have your parents to tell you about your cultural and traditional practices of old. You wouldn't know, but because they are there, they are able to teach you. And even in our schools today, we are able to learn our cultural practices. We are also able to learn about norms, values, rules, and regulations that guide our society. Through socialization, we know the do's and don'ts of our society. Another importance of socialization is that it allows everyone in society to live according to already developed and set norms, values, and beliefs. This means that it gives everybody uniform values and beliefs. We all have those beliefs, values, and interests in common. This helps to eliminate clash of beliefs or interests. Socialization also helps to maintain discipline in society. Now, we just talked about having uniform beliefs, norms, or interests. When everybody knows the set rules and regulations in society, it helps to maintain discipline. That is, it tells you what to do and what not to do. It makes individuals to conform and live according to the social expectations of their society. Socialization also helps to maintain a social system or social order in society. Now, we establish that socialization is a continuous process. So you see that from generation to generation, a social order or a particular system is maintained in society. Lastly, socialization brings about mutual understanding and cooperation between people from different historical and cultural backgrounds. We are able to live together in peace because of socialization. We will refer to our uniform beliefs, norms, or interests again. 
Despite our historical and cultural diversities, we still have the same set of rules, norms, regulations, beliefs, and interests in society. So through socialization, we are able to reach a mutual understanding and people are also able to cooperate together. The importance of socialization in society cannot be overemphasized. For us to be active participants in society, we definitely need socialization. We have seen the meaning of socialization, the agents of socialization, and the importance of socialization. Now we're going to do a summary of everything that we have learned today. First, we learned that socialization is learning the norms, customs, and practices with which we can become active members of the society. We also learned that socialization is a continuous process. It goes on and on. It is a continuous process by which culture is transmitted from generation to generation. We also learned about the five major agents of socialization and they are the family, the school, our peers, religious institutions, and the mass media. We also learned that socialization is very important because it helps us to get accustomed to the rules and norms guiding our society. It also provides us with knowledge and skills with which we can survive and play active roles in our society. And it also helps to maintain social order in society. Now we're going to have just one test question to test or to see how much we have learned today. And the question is, which of these is not a good social skill in our society? A. Good moral conduct. B. Respect for elders. C. Indecent dressing. And D. Showing kindness to others. The correct answer is C. Indecent dressing. This is not a good social skill. The others, good moral conduct, respect for elders, showing kindness to others, are good and positive social skills that we learn over time from our family, our schools, and also our peers. This is the end of our lesson on agents of socialization. I hope you've learned a lot today. Thank you and bye.